everyone, welcome back to Pragmatic Works. Today we're going to be diving into the world of streamlined efficiency as we explore the integration between Power Automate and SharePoint. Let's imagine a scenario where we work for a doctor's office and we have a list of all of our virtual appointments by date and by patient. We also have a separate list of all of our patients, including metadata about those patients, like their email address and their own unique virtual appointment links. So our goal today is to create a flow that goes into that list every day, retrieves all of the appointments that are happening tomorrow, and sending out an email to those patients with their unique links. So let's dive in and explore how we're going to solve this. All right, so jumping right into our data, you'll see we have a list here of all of our appointments that are coming up. I've just kept it simple. I have two appointments, one that is for tomorrow and one that is for two days from now. The appointment for tomorrow is for Molly and the patient is Molly Hallowell. So we'll see that this patient is actually a lookup column to another list that I have here in this SharePoint site called patients. This patient list contains the patient's name, their email address, and their own unique virtual appointment link. So our goal is to go in every single day into this appointments list, retrieve all of the records for appointments that are happening tomorrow, and to email the patient. So over at make.powerautomate.com, I'm gonna go to create, and I wanna do a scheduled flow. I'm just gonna call this email patients with upcoming appointments. Now I want this flow to run every week, and I want it to run Sunday through Thursday. Assuming that my office is not open on Fridays and Saturdays, I don't need to run this on Friday because I won't have any appointments on Saturday. I don't need to run this flow on Saturday because there are no appointments on Sunday. So once I have the, uh, the recurrence all set up, I'm gonna go ahead and click Create. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to go in and get all the items in my appointments list. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. We're gonna add a new step and I'm gonna search for get items. That's the name of this action with SharePoint. And we'll see that there are actually, there's two. So I wanna point this out. There's a get items and there's a get item. We're gonna be using both of these today. But first we need to basically retrieve all of the records from the appointments list. Now I'm getting ahead of myself here, but we actually don't wanna get all of the items. We only wanna get the items that are happening tomorrow, but we'll get to that next step right after this. I'm gonna put in my site address, Nate's demos. I'm gonna put in my list, that's my appointments list, and I'm gonna save this. Now, I'm the type of person that when I'm creating automations or apps, I like to test it pretty much every step of the way. So I'm gonna do a manual test. I'm gonna run this flow, and we'll see it ran successfully. So let's open up the get items and see what we got back. We click to download, here is what came back, and we're gonna explore this in just a minute as well. Now the next step is, I just returned every single item in that SharePoint list, but really I only wanna return the items that are happening tomorrow. So we're gonna to need to do a filter on this SharePoint list. So I'm gonna go back into edit, and let's go look at our SharePoint list. I want to filter on this appointment date column and I only wanna return the things that are happening tomorrow. So, let's see how this date actually gets returned. This is called the appointment date. So let's go in to this data that got returned, and I'm just gonna do a control F, and I'm gonna search for appointment. So I search for appointment date, and we'll see this is how it's getting returned from the flow. We've got 2023-08-08. So let's keep that in mind and let's go back to our flow. Now we wanna return basically all of the records that since today is 8-6, I wanna filter this by all of the appointments that have 8-7 as their appointment date. So I'm gonna add an action and first of all, let's go ahead and see how can we pull back today's date. So first, I'm gonna add an action. I'm just gonna do a simple compose step and I wanna see how does Power Automate return today's date. So I'm gonna go into add an action. I'm gonna search for compose. Click into inputs. 
I'm gonna go over to my dynamic content window and I'm gonna to go to the expression writer. Now there's a date and time expression called UTC now. So I just wanna see, okay, how is this gonna get returned? So to do that, I'm just gonna save it and run it. All right, so that ran successfully. Now I'm just gonna go into this compose step and see how UTC now gets returned in Power Automate. We'll see that it's this lovely UTC formatted 2023, 08, 06, and then the time. So knowing that our SharePoint date gets returned in a similar way, just without this time component, basically in SharePoint, it's getting returned as 2023-08-06. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna open up a notepad and I'm just gonna paste this in here for right now. So that's UTC now. So let's go back in and edit this flow again. And let's figure out a way to convert that UTC now to match how SharePoint returns that date. So I'm gonna add another compose step. I'm gonna use the format date time. And then what is the timestamp that we want to format Let's just use our UTC now. And then I'll do a comma. Now it's just asking us for the format and the locale in this expression. So the format, we're gonna put in single quotes and we're gonna put in, let me zoom in so we can see a little bit better. So for the format, we're gonna use in single quotes, year, 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 dash, month, month in capitals, dash, lowercase d, d. We'll go outside of our double quotes, add a comma to go to our next parameter of this format date time expression. I'll put in another pair of single quotes and the locale, if you are in the United States, would be EN dash capital US. And I will click OK. And I will zoom out. So now let's save this and rerun it. It ran successfully, so here's our first UTC now. And let's see what our second compose gave us. 2023-08-06. So it's taking UTC now and formatting it in a way that's gonna match how this data is stored in SharePoint. So knowing that, I can now use a filter expression on this get items step to filter this list only where that date is equal to this output. But before I do that, I need to also add a day to this. I don't wanna return all the appointments that are today, I wanna to return all of the appointments that are tomorrow. So let's go and add one more step here to this expression. So I'm gonna add another compose. Eventually I'm gonna remove all of these composes and we're just gonna have a nice expression. So I'm gonna do one more compose. And going into an expression, there is a uh, expression called add days. So I wanna add days. Now what is the timestamp that I want to add days to? I wanna add days to UTC now. And then a comma, and then it says how many days do you want to add? I wanna add one day to UTC now. Now that's going to give me another UTC timestamp. So going back to that expression we just wrote before, I can go right before this, this whole thing, right, is giving me a date timestamp. So I'm gonna go back to here and I'm gonna say format. I'm gonna say format date time parentheses the timestamp is this add days function, and then a comma, and then I'll again use the same single quotes, year, 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 dash, month, month, dash, day, day. Oh, and I add lowercase d's, dash, day, day. And then another comma, and then the locale is en dash us. So 
Let's save this and test it one more time. And if this gives me the date that I want, which is gonna be 2023-08-07, then I can use that expression to filter my SharePoint list. So let's see. 2023-08-07, excellent. So now let's go back into our get items action. There's the advanced options and we can add a filter query. For this OData filter query, we need to say the name of the column equals and then the value we wanna provide. So the first thing is we need the name of that column. So let's go back over to our SharePoint list and we see that the column is called appointment date. If I try to just put in appointment date equals and then our expression, I'm gonna get a failure because we need the logical name for this column. So to get the logical name for your column in SharePoint, I'm gonna go up to the gearbox and I'm gonna to go to list settings and then I'm going to go to the field that I want, which is the appointment date and I'm gonna click on that and then up in the URL, at the very end, you see where it says, and field equals, it'll give you the actual logical name for your field. So it's just appointment date with no space. So I'm gonna copy that. So in my filter query, I'm gonna paste that in. So appointment date, and then I wanna say equals. So I need to say EQ, and now we need to give it a value in single quotes. Because this is technically a string, I need to use single quotes. If this was a just a, a number or an integer, I would not provide those quotes. So I'm gonna say appointment date equals, and now I'm just gonna copy this expression that we wrote before. I'm gonna go back down between my double quotes, and I'm just gonna paste that in. Now that we have that, I can actually go and get rid of all of these compose steps. We don't need those anymore. All right, now that I've got my flow cleaned up a little bit, I'm gonna add one more step here and I'm gonna do another compose to just count how many records I got back, just so we can test this out and make sure that our filter query works. So I'm gonna do a new step. I'm gonna search for compose. And now I wanna just return the length that just got returned from the get items. So basically count how many rows the expression there is to do length, parentheses, and then I'll go to my dynamic content and I want the value from the get items step. So let's save this and test it. Now before I go and check, let's jump over to our SharePoint list and see how many we should get. So in my appointments list, the appointment date, there's only one that is for tomorrow. So that last compose step should return one. Let's go find out. And we got one. Now, just to double check, right? Just but verify. Let's go back to our SharePoint list and I'm gonna edit this one. And I'm gonna say this one is actually on the ninth. So we'll save that. Let's go back. And let's test this again, and we should get zero. It ran successfully, and we got zero items returned. Now, let's take this one step further because we want to email each of those patients for those appointments. And if we go back and we remember to our SharePoint list, we have a column that stores the patient. This is a lookup column to my patient list. So let's go back and edit this flow. And now I'm gonna add another new step. And now I want to get that item from the patient list. So if I do a, another get items action, we'll see that, remember there's two, there's get items, which we used here, which is returning all of the records in a SharePoint list the get item is gonna return one specific record. So the site address is gonna be the same as above. It's Nate's demos. The list name is gonna be our patients. And to use the get item action in SharePoint, we need to provide it with that item ID. So let's take a look and see what dynamic content we have from our get items. 
Because we have that lookup column, it also stores the patient ID. It's not showing in the list, but it's able to return that because it's uh, formatted as a lookup column. So I'm gonna use patient ID, and as I do that, you'll see that it goes into an apply to each loop. So for each record that gets returned from this step, go in and get that patient. Now that we have that patient, we can go ahead and add any other action we want to, like send an email. So I'll use the send an email v2 from Outlook, and I wanna send this to the patient. So I'm gonna use my add dynamic content, and from our get item step, I have the email. So I wanna send this to them, and the subject will be, so don't forget about your appointment tomorrow, and then in the body, I can say, hi, space, and then the title is their name, and then I can say, you have an appointment I'm gonna say here is your link and now if I wanted to add a hyperlink dynamically I can't go up to this hyperlink I actually have to do that in the HTML tagging so I'm gonna click on the code view for the body of this email and we'll see with our HTML tags we've got a paragraph a break you have an appointment tomorrow and then another break and then here is your link so just to make this easier I'm gonna get this paragraph on a new line I'll get this all by itself and I'm gonna say here is your and to do hyperlinking in HTML we're gonna use the a tag so we're gonna do a open carrot I don't know what you call them I'm just gonna call them carrots I'll say a and then you do space href equals and then double quotes and then I'll put in my virtual appointment link from the dynamic content. Then I'll close my tag. And then I'll put in whatever I want you know, the text of the hyperlink to be. So I'll put in all caps link. And then I will close my anchor tag. So let's go ahead and see what this would look like. So going back to my SharePoint list, I've made sure to just put my email address in for both of these patients. I'm gonna go back to my appointments list. I'm gonna make Molly's appointment once again for tomorrow. Let's go back here and let's save this and we'll give it another test. So I should expect that I receive an email that says, hi Molly, don't forget about your appointment tomorrow and here's your link so i'll hit the test run flow and it says it ran successfully and i'll bring this over and there we go hi molly you have an appointment tomorrow here is your link and we'll click i'll hover over this and zoom in so that you can see it and it says it's zoom.com slash this is molly's link so hopefully that helps you with understanding how to filter SharePoint with a date column, as well as how to use SharePoint lookup columns in order to link two tables or two lists in SharePoint together. Thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.